Okay, but let's start with Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 to verse 19. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love. Now, that's what our focus is for this season, that you be rooted and established in love. He says that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And I said to you before now that our objective is that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of what? Of God. In other words, when you are rooted and established in love, you will be able to function like God. So he said in Genesis, "What let us make man in our image and after our likeness. In other words, let us make them to be like us and to function like us. What Paul the Apostle is helping us to understand is that for us to function like God, we have to be rooted and established in love. Hallelujah. We have to be rooted and and established in love. You have to come to that point where you understand God loves me without reservation. Did you get that? God loves me without reservation and I have the nature of God's love. And what we're doing in this series is studying love so that we can understand ourselves. Because if I am God's child and I'm made in his image and God is love, the degree to which I understand myself is the degree to which I understand love. Are you with me tonight? So God is love. Say, I am love. Say it again. Say, I am love. Say it again. I am love. So we started looking at qualities of love. Or better still, we've been describing love with, love with words that are not familiar with us so that the common terms will not be lost on us. Let me remind you all that we have shared, all right, in a few minutes. I said that love is a choice, not a feeling. Love is a choice and not a feeling. In other words, you can show love to people you don't feel love for. You can demonstrate love to people that you don't feel love for. Love is not something you feel. Love is something you practice, okay? Love is not something you feel. Love is something you practice. I told you, number two, love is proactive, not reactive. In other words, love does not wait to receive before it gives, and love does not give in proportion to what it receives. Do you understand? Love gives. Love does not consider what they did to me before I decide what to do to them. That's not love. So as I say these words, I want you to look at yourself and evaluate. Am I love? Or do I need to catch up? Okay? Am I love? I didn't say, do I have love? God does not have love. God is love. So if you are of God, you are what? You are love. But it is, one, it is possible for you to be something and not understand it. It is possible for you to be something and not demonstrate it. And a lot of times it is because you don't understand yourself. So you need to realize, I don't need to feel something to demonstrate love. As a matter of fact, I can demonstrate love to people who have demonstrated hate towards me. That's why Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Do you understand now? Love your enemies. Don't get it twisted. It didn't say love people that are difficult. It says love your enemies. That they have identified to be your enemy qualifies them for love. Love your, say to your neighbor, love your enemies. Say it again, say love your enemies. Say it again, say love your enemies. Say it one more time, say love your enemies. All right, so love is proactive, not reactive. Number three, love is measured in sacrifice. I told you that weight is measured in kilograms. And grams, distance is measured in meters and kilometers. Love is measured in sacrifice. In other words, how much you love is determined by what you are willing to do to demonstrate it. And on Sunday, we took it further at the Lekki Church. We said, love covers but does not condone evil. Love covers but does not condone evil. In other words, loving you does not mean looking away when you cross the line. Loving you does not mean looking away when you cross the line, love will confront you, but not expose you. And a very good example of that was Joseph. Okay, when Mary said, I got, I got pregnant, I said, how? She said, by the Holy Ghost. Now, 
Joseph was righteous. I cannot continue with this. And I'm saying it to us because, you see, uh, for those of us growing up in Nigeria, you went to university in Nigeria, there were practices, okay, especially day, those days on campus, that made you look like you cared for people or you loved them, but you really don't. If you are in a class and your friend is not there and you write the person's name as if the person attended the class, that is not love. Hello? If you come to church early and you use your holy Bible to keep a seat for somebody who is still taking her bath at home, that is not love. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Love covers. Love is not going to expose you. Love is not going to embarrass you. But love is not going to condone iniquity. Do you understand? There are two sides to love. The one we love so much is the tender side. But you see, tender love without tough love is a scam. Do you understand what I'm saying? When somebody is tender towards you and they never look you in the face and confront you, they are setting you up for something they want to benefit. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you have somebody you want to collect from money from them, until you collect the money, there's nothing they can do wrong. So just butter them up, you butter them up, you butter them up. Some of you do like that to your bosses. When you are in the meeting, you look straight, you nod your head. When he turns his back, he turns his head and says, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's not love. If you are going to quit, quit. If you are going to resign, resign. But the reason why you cannot do it is not because you love that job. It's because of your salary. You don't care about what they do in that office. It's because you collect money at the end of the month. Pastor, I really love my job. Can you do it for six months without pay? Amen. That person you claim to love, remove money from the relationship. Let's see whether you truly love. Okay? The same thing we have in the case of Jesus and the woman caught in adultery. Jesus said, the person that has not sinned shall cast the first stone. All of them dropped their stones and walked away. Jesus said, where are your accusers? She said, they have all gone. What did he say? He says, neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. Love covers, but does not condone evil. All right? Love will support you, but will not participate in your error. If you commit a crime, I will visit you in prison. I will bring food for you. Do you understand? But I will not help you sign that something happened that did not happen. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Number what now? Number five. When love is truly appreciated, it is reciprocated. When love is truly appreciated, it is reciprocated. I know that we have a tendency to use all these qualities to measure other people. But I'm not teaching for other people. I'm teaching you for you. So don't apply it to other people, apply it to yourself. When love is truly valued or truly appreciated, it is reciprocated. Now, I said love is measured by what? So when it is reciprocated, it's by sacrifice. If I consider what you offer me valuable, I will give you something you consider valuable. You catch that? If what you have given me I consider valuable, I'm not going to give you just what I have. I will give you what you consider valuable. See, when you have people in your life who are a blessing to you and you don't have that urge to reciprocate, you are a user, not a lover. You are a child of God, but you have not allowed the love of God to be established in you. Or say it in another way, you are not yet established in love. Let me say it in another way. Love responds to sacrifice with sacrifice, not with convenience. Okay? Love responds to sacrifice with sacrifice. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12. Considering the mercy of God, what should we do? We should offer up our bodies to God as a sacrifice. What did he do? He offered his one and only son as a sacrifice for our sins. So when you are a believer that responds to the sacrifice of Jesus with convenience, you are not yet established in Love, I'm trusting God that by next week, Friday, we can take this deeper. Because the question somebody is asking is, so how do I become established in love? You understand? When you have somebody in your life or you have people in your life that are sacrificing for you. Okay, some of us are still have parents alive. When you get to that point, and, and I know when people get into marriage, they struggle with this. Okay, and we don't understand the concept of leaving and cleaving. That you have left to cleave does not mean you should forget do you understand what I'm saying? 
I know the lady say, yeah, you just nursed him for nine months. I've been nursing him for 20 years. The, the truth of the matter is those nine months were so crucial that the reason why you have a husband today is because somebody decided to keep the pregnancy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your mother-in-law has that shirt for life. Your father-in-law has his status for life. There are certain people in your life, their shirt is for life. And you have to honor them for life. Paul said that your health is tied to it. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So there's a way you are going to treat your wife. That your wife will know she is number one. But before number one, there were some other numbers. Are you listening to me? Before number one, there were some other numbers. And you have to continue to do what? You have to continue to honor them. You don't respond to their sacrifice with convenience. Amen. Let, let me push it on because of time. Say, say it to your neighbor for me. Say it to your neighbor. Don't respond to sacrifice with convenience. All right. I'm just going to add one more thing tonight. Because since tonight we have a lot of scriptures to share. Are you ready for this? It's a Friday night Bible study tonight. But this is the point we are looking at tonight. Love creates a conducive atmosphere for faith to work. Love creates a conducive atmosphere for faith to work. That is the only point. After now, we're just going to be reading scriptures. Is that okay? Let's start from Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36 to verse 40. It says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. For me, that's a surprise. I thought it would be believe the Lord your God. Love is stronger than faith. Okay? Love is stronger than faith. The greatest commandment is not believe the Lord your God. The greatest commandment is love the Lord your God. Hallelujah. With all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Preach to your neighbor. No. Love your neighbor as yourself, not like yourself. Love your neighbor just like you love yourself. Love your neighbor. How many of us love ourselves? See, that might be another message entirely because some people will have to be taught how to love themselves. That's another teaching on being established in love. Amen? Well, say it with me tonight. I love me. Say it again. Say, I love me. Say it one more time. I love me. Come on. Pamper yourself with your own voice. I love... I, ah. Mention your first name and tell yourself, I love me. Okay, mention your name as if you are somebody else and say, I love you. Do you understand now? Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. This is group therapy now, group therapy. I know some of you are just looking straight like this. If you know what I did, I, I don't feel like saying I love me. I don't deserve to be loved. Come on, mention your name and say I love you. Come on, come on now, come on. Oinda, I love you. Say it, say it. Oreolua, I love you. Say it, say it, say it, say it. Come on, say it again. Say it again. See, if you don't say it very well, the next assignment, you will not be able to do it. So do it one more time. Call your name. Call your first name, your second name, and that your village name that people don't know. Now put your son name after it and say, I love you. Oh yeah? Go ahead. Amen. Now, turn to your neighbor and say, I love you. This is what you will notice. After saying, I love you to yourself severally, turning to your neighbor to say, I love you, your tone of voice will not change. No matter how hard you try, you will never treat anybody better than you treat yourself. Okay? But guess what? To train you to love yourself a lot of times, you may have to start with loving other people. But that's for another day. Let's go on. Jesus said that the greatest commandment is love. That the whole of the Old Testament, everything in the Old Testament, all the prophecies of the prophets, everything hung on this word, this commandment. Love God, love people. Love God, love people. The greatest commandment. The reason is because love is what creates the atmosphere 
for faith to work. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 21 to verse 24. You have heard it said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murder shall be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. So based on all that he has said, he now said, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, an act of faith, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in the front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. If not, you offer a miss. Do you understand now? We're fasting and praying. I'm, I'm walking towards the new season. I'm sowing seed. God said, before you do that, now this is offering, now we're going to get to prayer very soon. See, some of you, if you are going to pray by five, you should wake up by four. So that the prayer you will offer from five may be answerable. We'll get there very soon. Every act of faith that is not preceded by peace is a wasted effort. Are we getting this? Another verse of scripture. Let's get to prayer now. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Wait, wait, wait. Ladies, wait. You remember where Paul said that in the spirit there's neither male nor female? When you read this verse of scripture, please apply it to both men and women. Because the women have used it to oppress us for a very long time. You are weak where I am strong. And I am weak where you are strong. We are both weaker virtues. Amen. So let's read, that with, let's read this with that understanding now. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as hears with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Somebody is going to pray tomorrow for four hours and that prayer will not ascend. And it is because of the things they did yesterday. Because in relating with their spouse, they did not deal with sensitivity. With knowledge. Are you listening to me? God says, I will consider your work of love before I respond to your acts of faith. Because love is what creates the atmosphere where faith works. You know, when people hear me say things like I don't get angry, they don't understand. It's not because I like you that I don't get angry. It's because I love me. Do you understand now? You know, they, they say stuff like you don't negotiate with terrorists. There are some people that are not going anywhere. No vision, no ambition. And how do you know such people? The easiest thing for them is a fight. Have you met anybody like that? To pick offense for them is like picking their nose. As as they just, they just get angry. You see, Yorubas will say that when you want to eat with the devil, you need what? Let me give you another proverb. That the person that does not want you to be satisfied, what do you do? Eh? You add their own to the food. Do you know what that means? People will only disturb you when they don't have enough. So when you sort them out, it's not because you care in that sense, but it's because you know that area boys. Let me tell you what I'm saying. Can you remember that time that um, I, can't even, I can't remember? Yeah, yeah. There was, um, what's it called, um, xenophobia, whatever, in South Africa. Okay? Some South Africans attacked some Nigerians. Okay? Then area boys in Lagos now got angry and went to the mall, Weto, where had a mall that had just one South Africa establishment, but they demolished the whole place. They vandalized the whole place. Please. Why were they attacking fellow Nigerians? Then some people were going home. It happened to one of my friends. They were just going home. They attacked vehicles, vandalized, vandalized people's vehicles. Guess what? They'd be angry all the way. They did not just have an excuse. Do you understand what I'm saying? They, they, just like when we were on campus. Have you noticed? Probably you are doing lecture and all that. You just say, um, solidarity forever. 
So you have some guys in your class. It does not matter what the lecturer is saying. They did not plan to come for that class. They did not just have an excuse not to be there. The moment they hear, so li, so li, so, they have gone. I'm always surprised. Where did they come from? Before you know it, they say they are fighting there. They are, who are those people fighting? All of us were in class right now, about to write the exam or take a class. But you have NFAs. And we have NFAs in church too. Amen? There are NFAs in your house too. So what does the Bible say? Do not be overcome by evil. Overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. You overcome evil when you repay them in their own coin. They are not praying. You are the one that wants to pray. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says two are better than one. Because if one is weak, the other one can do what? There are times when the devil wants to get on your case. It's your spouse. The devil will come for. That's what that scripture is for. When one is down, the problem is the two of us should not be down at the same time. So when the wife of Lot is behaving like one of those women, Lot must have enough sense not to respond to her in kind. Are you listening to me now? Sometimes it's the husband that will behave like neighbor. The wife must make sure I don't do what, I don't lose. And in that moment, it is not that your husband or your wife has become the devil. Peter still became the first pastor of the first church. But Jesus looked him in the face and said, get thee behind me, Satan. So sometimes people volunteer without knowing to be used of the devil. Amen. Amen. The wife of Lot was not there. When the devil said to God, it will cost you to your face. Okay? She was not there. But she told Lot to curse God and die. Exactly the same thing the devil said. What does that mean? Somewhere along the line, she heard from the devil. I taught you that one this morning. Be careful. Negative emotions. The moment you allow negative emotions to sit, you see, negative emotions sitting in your heart is an invitation for the devil to come and have a conversation. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when the devil whispers something to you, the way we were designed, the moment it takes root in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. When you are a sensitive person, sensitive sibling, sensitive spouse, and this person is beginning to speak what is not faith, whatever is not feeding your faith, it's fighting it, it's killing it. So you have to respond with sensitivity. That's what the Bible is saying. When it says you should behave according to knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to respond to knowledge. You see, because the devil is not after this conversation. The devil is after the prayer tomorrow morning. And some of us wake up middle of the night and you are praying to God. And there are about 10 people, 20 people who are not able to sleep angry with you. What the Bible says is when you get there to offer a gift and you remember that somebody has something against you, you are not the one that has something against somebody. You know what that means? When you are fully established in love, there is a way you can make an NFA like you. Are you getting this right now? Are you getting this right now? There is a way you can make somebody that does not want to love you, love you. You know what I found out? No matter how evil people are, they cannot, okay, they cannot defend themselves against authentic love. When somebody has decided to hate you, you consciously do good to them. They can't help it. They can't help it. They can't help it. That is the reason why love becomes something you practice, not something you feel. Okay? Something you practice, not something you feel. If not, when you allow them, area boys, to drag you to the level. I mean, it's just like, God forbid, like, keep using Ore for this example now. Ore takes a keke in bike. I mean, he's the one with the future. He's the one with the vision. Okay, and the guy is supposed to give him 200, and all right, we say, give my 200, and the guy says, get away, I don't have change. When you start fighting, have you noticed they are quick to remove their clothes? They, didn't have, they don't have anywhere they are going. They will hear you. You will be speaking English like this. Are we, and then you, you are the one looking stupid. He is an area boy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Two weeks later, you are still feeling bad. He has moved on. Amen. Some of you get into those kind of conflicts in your office with people that don't have your covenant, with people that are not going where you are going, with people that have not heard what you heard. They don't have your kind of destiny. Love now becomes your weapon. The person comes to you, you, you think you're in your house, ah, today, <laughs> I came for you, but you did not come for you, for them to show them in their own coin. You come with love. 
you will overpower them with love. And you cannot use my seat to, it's okay, it's okay. I, I, I will bring two, one for you, one for me. Amen. Amen. It looks like this is the message. I, I should stay here, Abby. Mm -hmm. How are you? So what would you, have for, what would you like for lunch? The person that removed your name from the list. The person will now be wondering, where are you from? And the person will now come. Have people apologized to you before? Even though there was no discussion of offense. Especially when they are about to be transferred. Amen? You hate things like whatever I would have, have done against you. In any way, you know, when you were doing bad, you knew you were doing bad. Amen? So, but you need to understand it's not their story, it's yours. They are not the ones on trial. You are the one. They are not praying. You are the one praying. So you need to understand love is your weapon. The Bible did not say whether you are justly offended or not. The Bible says follow peace with all men. And when the Bible says, don't worry, in the month of February, I'm going to do a teaching on how to love difficult people. It requires skill. Because God knows when he allowed them. Amen? You remember when he came to Jesus? Okay? The seed and the, let them grow together. Some of you right now, you could make a list for God. People that should die. You know, Christians are always saying this. Why is it that bad things happen to good people? Why is it the good people that die first? If God consults us, we have a list of people that can go now and nobody will miss them. Have you noticed they don't die? It's as if there is an allocation from heaven for their preservation because Penina has purpose. Is somebody listening to me? If not for Judas, there would have been no Gogota. You can abuse Judas all you like. You may be surprised. You will meet him in heaven. You will now answer. They will say, Judas fulfill his own purpose. I mean, somebody must betray him. You, did you fulfill your own? The only thing is, if you are not, if you don't have the calling of Judas, and you are fulfilling the purpose of Judas, there is no reward. If you are not Penina, and you are peppering people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. James chapter 4 verse 1 to 3. James chapter 4 verse 1 to 3. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something but you don't get it. You kill and covet. This is what happens all around. I wish I could say this happens only in the secular. It happens a lot in church. Somebody said if you want to master politics, come to church. Church people, church. Oh boy. Let me tell you the truth. Most of the time, the most people are in the spirit most of the time during prayer and worship. After that. And then there are some really deep politicians. That's why you notice when message is going on, they are outside. I said that so that from now, when you see yourself outside, you're like, no, oh, I refuse to be out. But because this is what I'm trying to say. I don't know how comfortable people can be. Prayer is going on. Praise and worship is going on. Prayer is going on. I don't know what conversation. I don't know how people do it. To be using pastor's voice for background music. During message. There's nothing we are talking about at that moment that is that important. And when you move close to them, yes, sports, politics. They've done it for years. It has not helped Nigeria. Come into this. Sorry. I just needed to, you know, stable it. <laughs> but there's a lot of politics in church. There's a lot of unrighteousness in church. I mean, just go online and you see people using scriptures to fight. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where is the love? Using scriptures to fight. One guy said, I beg to disagree, sir. Then in his comments, called the man of God stupid. In one comment, he started with, I beg to disagree, sir. So, my friend, he responded, you cannot call me, sir, and stupid at the same time. <laughs> what? Christians, the moment you disagree with them, something else will come out. Oh, boy. Hallelujah. What causes fights and quarrels among you? It's not because we love God that much. Some people that claim contending for the faith, they are not contending for the faith. They are just hot-headed. Amen? What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. It says, you do not have because you do not ask God. Verse 3, when you ask, you do not receive. Because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get 
on your pleasures. So what is the right motive for prayer? Love. You understand what I'm saying? Love. 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 I say this to ladies all the time. Single ladies, listen to me. Stop saying, Father, give me a husband. It's time for me to get married. All my mates are married. No, you are trying to get that for yourself. Don't say, Father, give me a job. By now, I should have a job. Wrong motive. Don't say, Father, give me a house. I deserve one. Wrong motive. Love is always focused on others. For God so loved the world that he gave. Are you listening to me now? For God so loved the world that he gave. I learned a valuable lesson from my father. Let me, let me say, share this with you. So my son came to my room yesterday and he gave me, he brought a receipt. And he said, Daddy, they said I should give you from my school. And I looked at it. And then he said, Daddy, what does it mean? I said, it means that your school fees has been paid. I don't know where he got it from. I just felt like, he said, he said Daddy, thank you very much, okay, for taking care of me, for everything you do for me, for all of that. And as he was saying, oh, my son is a lover, I mean, so I said, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. And then we hugged. I said, it's okay. It's what daddy has to do. Okay, because I love you. Then he said, he said, he said, daddy, do you think I'm going to have enough money to do this for my own family? I said, of course, you're going to be richer than I am. You're going to be wealthier than daddy. He said, you, are you sure? I said, yes. Of course, I factored my, if you can't take care of me, I will take care of me. <laughs> oh, you've got to, you are going to hammer big time. That is my life's assignment. That is my prayer point. Why did I tell you that? Because I am doing that now because I learned a lesson from my father. My father told me, he said, I have come to find out that you are a source of blessing to me. I said, what do you mean? He said, I may not have money. He said, but the moment you have a need, there is supply. So this is the simple equation. Have you ever seen a dry tap before? If people are fetching water from the tap, of a necessity, it has to be wet. So, so the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, shall men add to your bosom. One wise guy prayed from that verse of scripture. He said, God, when you want to repay people that give, excuse me. Can, can you get that? When you say, you said, shall men add, those men that you used to add to the bosom of those that give, enlist me as one of them. I was at a men's retreat, my time is up. I was at a men's retreat so many years ago, and I was teaching this same principle on how when you approach God, you have to approach God with your heart focused on other people. And I gave an illustration. We are in the same prayer meeting. One person is praying, Father, bless my boss so that he can pay my salary. Another person is praying and say, Father, bless me so that I can pay the salary of my staff. Who do you think God will hear first? It's the Lord of hosts. Jehovah Sabaoth. Are you listening to me now? I finished preaching and then it was a men's meeting, so they were sharing and all that. And a man came out and said, Pastor, I just, I just had to share this as a, as a testimony to what you shared with us. That right here, my prayer today, he said, before now, my goal has always been, at every point in time, I must have all my staff salary three months ahead. So, but as we plan for this new year, I have shifted that goal to six months. Do you understand? Before they start working, before we start making profit, from the beginning of the year, I want to have their salaries for six months. Do you understand? Dangote said, I don't have a house outside Nigeria but I have staff with properties abroad. You know the challenge of a lot of people? Some of us are too religious to be spiritual. And God is not religious. He is very spiritual. The moment your heart is on people, God will channel resources towards you. Why should I do this and not tell my friend Abraham? Seeing that he will teach his children and his children to fear the Lord. So the reason why God started inter interacting with him is because of his tendency to be patriarchal. God says, I know that whatever I get across to this guy, he will pass it on. Amen. He will not keep it to himself. He will pass it on. So God is quick to pass to people who will do what? Who will pass. So when you approach him in prayer, don't try to be a scammer. Because he does not answer prayers, he answers hearts. Are we getting this? So before you start praying, you need to sit down and ask yourself the question, why? 
Why? Why? Hallelujah. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 5 to 6. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 5 to 6. But by faith, we eagerly await through the Spirit, the righteousness for which we hope. Look at verse 6. For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. So that your faith that you express without love is fake. Are we getting it now? The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. So Abraham thrived in a battle where kings failed. Are you listening to me? You know the reason why? Because he was motivated by love. He did not rescue Lot for any gain. So when he came back, they were trying to offer him bounty. He said, no, 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 no. He said, I lifted my hand to God. <laughs> Are you listening to me now? So when you want to begin to deal with God, you cannot come to God for yourself. When he went to Moses, he said, I have heard the cry of my people and I am sending you. So what is the basis of that interaction? Oh, you are righteous enough. I want a relationship with you. No. It is about my people. It's about my people. Amen? Amen. Dr. Banji's people. There's something they say. Amen? When they spray money and they overspend, this actually happened. And it's a man. He was a thrift collector. He sprayed his own money. Then the collection money he took. When he got to him, he said, Ah! He said, In other words, stop the music I have misprayed. Amen? I said all of that for you to understand what happened in scripture. When God showed up in the room of Solomon and God said, ask me anything. Ask me for anything. The only thing God did not say is to have my kingdom. <laughs> ask me for what did Solomon do? He offered sacrifices to God. When God said, ask me anything, he said, me, I don't want anything. No. Just give me wisdom because of your people. God responded in Yoruba. He said, ah, but boy, he gets me. Amen. When I read my Bible, that's why I say, see, God said, ah, I will bless you. Is wisdom you ask for me? <laughs> I will give you wisdom. But even the things you did not ask, listen, if you want God to misbehave on your behalf, be rooted and established in love. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whatever it is you are doing, don't do it for you. Do it for others. And God, you know, the Bible says that he that gives to the poor borrows God money. <laughs> Do you know what? See, some people think God is paying attention and fasting and praying. A lot of times we don't know what God is marking. He that gives to the poor lendeth unto God. What does that mean? You did not shout. People did not notice. But you were just driving. Amen? You see that guy by the traffic light. Stop saying he has and he has legs. It takes something wrong with the person's mind to beg. So they are handicapped anyway. When you see a person begging, it's an handicap. Give. If you don't have, say you don't have. Stop forming activists. You understand what I'm saying? After all, they pay them. Seriously? In this country? The people that are gainfully employed in this country are less than 2%. I'm telling you the truth. Some of us, it's just sense of dignity. That's why if we should obtain you in this <laughs> if we share grace, if you, if you can obtain something, sorry. You'll be surprised whether it's decorum and faith. Just give. God says, I noticed those things. Amen? He says, I'm in prison, you visited me. I noticed those things. When you help people that cannot help you back, God says, I noticed those things. Are you listening to him? When you approach God for spiritual things, Cornelius, your arms has come, you know, they have kept record, kept record, kept record, kept record, and God visits, you know, when you do contribution, and people pack, say, Cornelius, it's your turn to pack. <laughs> Amen. Say, Cornelius, your arms have come up before God. You know, it has become, they've kept record to the point as they are repaying people, there is a shadow. Today is your turn. Are you listening to me? Because God keeps a record of those kind of things. Final scripture and I'm out of your face. Package your tithes and offering. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so. Because your faith is growing more and more. And the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. 
Can you see this now? If your faith grows, it is because your love is growing. If your love grows, your faith will grow. So some people think they don't have faith. No. Everybody has faith. Where we struggle is the love. Are you listening to me now? That's why the Bible says, whatever two or three of us shall agree as touching on earth. There are principles stronger than faith. Agreement is stronger than faith. But can two work except they what? They be in agreement. That's why there is a family. They don't shout like you shout in your house. They don't pray like we pray in your house. But it looks as if God is blessing them. And you are your husband. You are in four departments in church. But the fight in your house is more than the fight. Uh, you know where boys play kashi? <laughs> you know they can play now. <laughs> Next day, fight has broken out. The fight in some people's house is greater than that. And I'm not talking about the kind of fight that neighbors will come and separate you. I'm talking about that kind of fight that even people don't know you are fighting. You know, so you ladies with silent treatment. You understand? They'll just see that the brother is losing weight. They will not know a silent treatment you are using to dry the brother. Amen. Where has God commanded his blessing? In the place of love and unity. And that's why I teach that it's better to be at peace than to be right. It is better to be at peace than to be right. Hallelujah. There's nothing, see, listen to this. The devil is so, is so crafty. He doesn't need to send village people to you. He will just turn the two of you against each other. Married people, have you noticed? And we fight about almost every stupid thing conceivable. Amen. Why did you leave the seat up? Why did you leave the toilet seat? Every time you're always lifting it, lifting it up. Lift. Hey, you always, always, you always. Or it's toothpaste. Hallelujah. It's toothpaste. Why can't you just buy two? The person I want to press from the bottom, the one that wants to press from me, it is the same toothpaste. Hallelujah. My food is not ready. Oh God, are you for food only? My food is not ready. In this house, with the way I am working, I, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve, everywhere is hot. Okay? If you want to measure the love level in your house, measure it by how children are able to misbehave. When children less than four behave themselves in your house, everybody just knows, avoid the tiger. <laughs> Even a child of... They are not playing, that, that is back. That is, that is back. You are always putting your foot down. You are, I feel strongly, I feel strongly, you put your foot down. Oh God, your prayer is not going anywhere. Hallelujah. I don't know why you people are reacting like this. Am I coming too close for comfort? Have I come down your street? Amen. I'm telling you, that's why most of the men of faith I know, it looks as if they are not smart. Most men of faith I know, that are very, very successful. It looks as if people are cheating them. It's not like they don't know. Even Jesus knew that Judas was stealing money. And he did not fire Judas. Another message entirely. You should be evaluating your work from time to time. Because that you have a job does not mean that. Do you understand? <laughs> I'm just saying, Judas kept his job till the end. But Jesus knew. Please. Because the devil's intention is not just Judas. If Jesus fought Judas, Judas would have poisoned the rest of the disciples. I hope you are getting this. Jesus allowed it. There's more where that came from. Hallelujah. There's more where that came from. Helping yourself. Don't corrupt these ones. Be helping yourself. Hallelujah. So how, did, how is it that the others did not know? When Jesus said that which you have to do, do quick. The remaining people felt he was just going to give money to the poor. Because the impression they all had of Judas is that he's always executing the instructions of Jesus. But Jesus knew. When I tell him to buy five loaves of bread, he buys three. But he said nothing. Amen. You know what I love about this kind of message? When you sleep and wake up, you will hear more than I shared. It will speak to you in different ways. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor for me, I am rooted in love. I am established in love. Say it again, I am rooted in love. I am established in love. I am a person of peace. I follow peace with all men. In the name of Jesus, I follow peace with all men. In the name of Jesus, I am at peace with all men. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we magnify you. For the entrance of your word gives light. 
It gives understanding to the simple. Thank you because we have received light tonight and our lives will not remain the same. We give you the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you.